Welcome to the Dwarven Forge Build of the Month for January of 2021, and this is the root of all evil. It's a remote grove that houses a grotto where a Gulthius tree was once cultivated and evil magic still permeate the area. This build was created using four of our Dread Hollow sets, one Light Forest pack, one Cave Mouth pack, one Escarpment's Corner Builder pack, and one Dread Hollow dressings. Hold everything, I messed up. I grabbed one tree too many when I was putting together this composition and we didn't find out until right now, the night before launch. We didn't want to not launch this build of the month and the bundle, so we plunged ahead as is with this disclaimer. So you have to imagine that there's one tree less than everything you see here. If you want to replicate this as you see it, you can get a Dread Hollow dressing, a second Dread Hollow dressing, and that's got another small tree in it. Sorry about that, I'll count twice next time. Now, enjoy the show. This whole thing is available on our web store as a bundle with a bonus gift card, but only for the month of January. This is also a two-part build, so partway through the encounter, you rearrange the pieces to build a whole second thing. The story is, lights have infested the forest and a local ranger has enlisted the players to find the source of these blights and destroy it. So let's see what happens in The Root of All Evil. So, our heroes will venture out into the woods uh, in search of the root of these, uh, these evil plants gone wild. Why are these blights overtaking the forest? Uh, it's a great chance to have them make a survival check, uh, let the ranger actually do some cool tracking, or you could always fall back on a nature check. And if they score really well, they uh, have no random encounters. If they score medium, they could uh, have an encounter would get the jump on the blights, and if they score poorly, they just get overrun by blights, or whatever you want. So when you're narratively appropriate, once they've had a hard enough time in the woods, they've wandered around, done enough investigating, um, eventually they come upon this grove here. Ooh. And the important thing to note is there's a whole bunch of trees that have been rotted out, uh, taken by the blights. Uh, it feels like the whole woods, everything is suffering here. This forest is, and this definitely seems like the heart of the suffering. Of course, the big giveaway is the evil glowing red cave over yonder. So of course, as soon as players have a bad feeling about something, they gotta go investigate it. So our, our heroes will go check it out and at some point, they will be ambushed by blights. Perhaps a bunch of these plants, or there were plants in here that were blights that were sort of saying stationary, trying to look like trees. They uproot, and they come and attack. And a fun combat will ensue. Uh, we have a lot of neat, you know, there's a lot of movement and line of sight blocked by these stumps, so it's kind of fun dynamic zipping around every which way. We have a lot of uh, areas that can be difficult terrain, so you can make just for the movement interesting and dynamic. You can use a lot of these areas like these rocks make for fantastic difficult terrain. There's a little elevation change, they're uneven. So lots of opportunities to make the combat dynamic and interesting. Uh, if you have extra modular trees around, you could have all of the trees start as solid and then when the players approach, they kind of uproot and reveal themselves as blights and you replace them with stumps and then the blights can chase them around. Although this would be a pretty sizable blight. So we have a, we have a fun encounter around here with the goal of the blights are trying to stop the players from getting into the cave. Uh, so they won't pursue them, they won't do it, they mostly just want to keep them, to keep this cave safe. Must keep mama safe. So there's also the only other interesting noteworthy bit outside here, besides there's a big old cliff, is there's this ring of strange mushrooms here. Um, and if the players investigate, there's something otherworldly about these. They seem like they might, maybe with the right, uh, right nature or kind of check, you find out they're, they seem they might be from the Feywild, but something is strange about them. There's, there's a strange influence, um, and they seem like they've grown very rapidly. And if they do maybe a little survival check again, they could find there's sort of little trails of little bits of spores sort of going into the cave. It looks like little smaller ones have sort of grown along the way. It looks like whatever, where these came from, it originated inside the cave. All signs point to investigate the cave. So of course, our intrepid heroes are going to decide to investigate the cave. So then when you go in there, you can, you can pop off this for access. Get your minis in there. Even pop off the gnarled tree if you want. You can see here we just put a colored gel on the back of this to create the cool 
sort of red light, pink light effect in the uh, cave. Very easy little trick you could do yourself at the game table. So once they enter the cave, uh, if I was running this in my home game, I would just switch to theater of the mind mode. You're very welcome to do that. We're gonna show after the story, we have a little uh, build tips section. We'll show you an alternate what you could do if you wanted to build out something inside. So they'll venture into this, this cave uh, and there they will, this very small little sort of grotto full of, uh, of growing things and they will discover uh, an elven druid and she's sitting there uh, surrounded by mushrooms and it looks like she's in a trance like the elf uh, sleepy trance thing like maybe she's sort of sleep sleeping or elf sleeping whatever you call it she's in her trance not sure what's going on they kind of wave her hand but they realize something's wrong with her eyes right she, it's she's not there and if they they look closer and they investigate it looks like the mushrooms are growing on her and around her and it looks like they're actually growing into her flesh uh, which is not so good and there's a big bunch of the mushrooms sort of around them and they, if they if they check out the uh, the floor the the stone check out the cave just kind of they discover that this is phase stone right there's something the stone is slightly out of phase out of sync with the rest of reality uh, and of course the mushrooms in front of her uh, form another one of these mushroom rings so there'll be another bunch of mushrooms there's a, they're all surrounding her they're all over the place and then in front of her there's a patch and there's a bare patch in the middle and if they step into that they get uh, transported somewhere else and we're going to rebuild this into something new. Let's see what it looks like. Players step in the mushrooms in the cave, and the prime material, they'll appear in here. We'll put the little, so it's the same thing. We'll put the little, uh, put the same little fairy ring here inside the cave mouth, and they'll appear in there. And they find themselves in a strange, like, uh, kind of demi plane pocket. It's like a, a weird, ethereal pocket in the primal chaos and all around uh, them here. So the edges of this build, it's like a long, narrow build. The edges of this build is all swirling, crazy, raw elemental chaos, right? They're, um, you do not want to go out there. Like if you get thrown out there, that's it. Like you, you'll never see the prime material again. Like your, your reality is gone, which is something they can use later. They can throw like bad guys out there if they want or whatever. And everything in here is a little, it's kind of spectral and ghostly, it's spirits. And they're gonna notice, besides the crazy, like roiling uh, elemental chaos that's raging all around them, they'll notice like a little like a little chipmunk, like hopping around, like a crazy, uh, maybe it's a raven, a chipmunk's funner, like a chittering chipmunk. And this is the druid's uh, wild companion. If you're using the, uh, the Tasha's, Tasha's cauldron rules for the druid wild companion. This is her wild companion, Fae Spirit. So it's the spirit of her wild companion. It's here and it's kind of like chittering at them like, hey, like, you know, kind of the version of help, help, whatever that chipmunk is for help, help, help. My master's stuck in a tree kind of thing. It's the, it's the lassie, uh, Timmy's falling down the well. So theoretically the players will follow the chittering chipmunk and whenever you want out of here, out of the elemental chaos, mephits can come flying from all sides and all flavors of mephits, right? Because there's no, no rule. It's going to be any elemental flavor you want. Just coming from all sides and make it like a really, once again, interesting dynamic battle. We have like a, a raised area here and lots of stumps and rocks and difficult terrain and stuff to make it uh, a fun challenge as sort of mephits are zipping in and around from all sides. You could also do fun things where uh, their magic if you're casting spells, it could it could boost certain uh, damage. Maybe you roll randomly each turn. Fire and thunder are boosted this turn and next turn. It's it's cold and acid or whatever because the elemental energy is so strong. The elemental seepage is coming in here. And they also might notice back in the cave that there's definitely you know elemental seepage everywhere. It seems like there was a you know some the the veil between the planes was thin in the cave, and that's how they're here. Who knows exactly how they got here? They'll figure it out in a sec. But so they can fight off the mephits, crazy dynamic battle where they're going. They're going every which way. They're jumping up high. They're hiding behind stumps. They're climbing on difficult terrain. 
We're having a jolly old time exploring the z-axis of 3D terrain. So the little chittering chipmunk wild companion spirit sort of heads over here, and the players, of course, will follow. And here they are confronted by this terrible stump. There's evil, there's malevolence. There's emanating from the stump. This is, there's something, there's dark magic afoot here. And this is the spirit of a Gulthius tree. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking they have to fight it. They have to do something. There's, because they hear, inside they hear the cries. They can see the form of another spirit, the spirit of the druid. Uh, the elf druid from the cave is trapped inside this tree. It's being consumed by the spirit of this tree. And this tree is what's sustaining kind of this pocket of weird ethereal demiplane inside the elemental chaos. So they've got to somehow deal with it. You know, why don't you tell us in the comments, how the heck do they get the spirit out of the spirit of the Gulthius tree? So after many trials and tribulations, the players will finally figure out how to defeat the tree, pop open the lid, and reveal the spirit of the elf druid. And they'll extract her from the spirit of the Gulthius tree. And she will tell them she sensed there was malevolence in the forest and she found this hidden cave deep in the forest and she believed a Gulthius tree had been uh, cultivated there once. So she decided to cleanse and consecrate the cave. So she sat down to do her ritual, but on her person she had magical enchanted seeds from the Fey Wild. And this cave had elemental seepage from the elemental chaos itself. So all of it converged and somehow was a catalyst for her seeds. It was like super fertilizer, like ultra manure, like magic manure for her seeds that were probably so as she was doing her ritual, her spreeds, seeds sprouted into these crazy mushrooms. The spores of them kind of put her in this state, and then the dark magic that was in the cave was able to inhabit her body and harness her magic. And then it was able to use her husk of her body and harness her magic to start creating the blights in the forest and doing what it does best, spreading the despair and darkness and corrupting the forest. But luckily, they have saved her. They, they can head back. Doot, 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 doot. They return her spirit back into her body and be hailed as heroes. And now they have like an arc druid as a friend. So that works out too. So here's a couple of ideas of some other things you could do if you wanted to make this build more elaborate. Uh, first off, you could build out the back cavern area and fly something in on a terrain tray. Uh, you could do something like this. This is just using one of our basic cavern sets. I dropped in the fairy ring in there so you could put your druid in there and have somewhere for your players to look at while they're role playing. You could do this whole thing, theater of the mind, but if you want the full immersion, you want to build everything out, it'd be really fun. You can build a cavern here. You can use the back of the escarpments to, uh, as part of your cavern wall if you want to build it out like that. Pretty easy and fun to just build some, some little cavern complex. You could scatter some greenery and plants in there and stuff too if you want. So in the forest area, if you wanted to expand out this build, here's a couple easy things you could do. Uh, one, you could just you could take terrain trays. In this case, we have four terrain trays, all the ones hidden, so you could use three. Or a battle mat or a flip mat or whatever you want underneath it and throw some of our uh, banks around the edge. In this case, it's two sets of our forest transition banks to transition you from sculpted floors down to uh, whatever your surface is there. And I didn't have enough of these little corners, or four corners, so in here I just put this stump lump, uh, the edge of it's 90 degrees, so it fits right in there and kind of fills that little gap up nicely. Fills this whole thing. Uh, you could also, if you wanted, you could move some of the scatter up off your build over like something like this to fill it out a little more. Um, it gets less, less tight and less dense, uh, but also you have more room to kind of run around and play around. So a couple of tips of how you could uh, expand on this build quite easily. I hope that inspires you. And that was the root of all evil, a two-part forest build that I hope grows on you. This whole thing is available as a bundle on our web store with a bonus gift card, but only for the month of January. Build guides are also available as a free download on our website. If you wanna help us make the next one, be sure to tune in to Building of the Build of the Month on our Twitch channel. And then like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on this or any of our other quality content from Dwarven Forge. Thanks for watching, and I hope this inspires your adventures. And now, 
It's back to the anvil. 